Thank you for watching Stream GM. Um, first, I'm going to introduce all the panelists, uh, esteemed panelists. This is probably going to be the worst chairing you've ever seen. They've given me a piece of paper here to go through points, presumably because if they didn't, I'd talk about myself for 45 minutes. So starting at the very end, we've got Mary Claire Daly from the Greater Manchester Combined Authority. I call her the Queen of Culture for Greater Manchester. Um, we've got Lutz from Berlin here. Lutz was the co-initiator of United We Stream and the reason why we're actually sat here. To my left, Graham Park, DJ Hacienda. He's going to hate me for saying this, but it's not written on here. He is a legend. Without Graham, without Mike Pickering, probably the warehouse projects and part of life wouldn't exist. He inspired us at, at the Hacienda. Um, Rebecca Soiree, known as Rebecca, never Becky, don't call her Becky, she gets fuming if you call her that. Um, we've got Tom, Chief Exec of the English Folk Expo, and David Agnew, who's the Creative Director of the Met in Berry, who kindly gave us the home for United We Stream. Highlights, is that correct? I've been asked to summarise uh, United We Stream, and we are going to chat to, to Lutz in a minute, who's the, um, the pioneer behind it. But I remember clearly going into lockdown one and, and having a conversation with our mayor, Andy Burnham, who was concerned about keeping people entertained indoors. And I think he naturally came to me because he knows I put parties on, entertain people. Um, and I was like, well, how, you know, how do you do this? I hadn't even heard about United We Stream. And I started Googling stuff and I saw this amazing concept of uh, putting a techno DJ into an empty club in Berlin and streaming it out and entertaining people in Berlin. And it was totally free to watch, but the, the guys in Berlin were saying, look, 
You know, everyone in our music industry is struggling at the moment. If you can donate one euro, two euros, three euros, please do that. So that same day, I managed to get hold of Lutz's telephone number. And I remember clearly I was walking around my garden, my shorts on, no shoes, speaking to this guy I'd never met before in Berlin. I was like, look, it's an amazing idea. Can we do this in Manchester? And they, I have to say, in 26 years of putting parties on, events with Park Life, Wales Project, things like that, that those 10 weeks of United We Stream were probably my proudest achievement along with the team. All these people sat here next to me and the people behind the cameras, you know, Gareth, Colin, Katie, Laura, they all made this happen. It was such an intention that every single day. Um, but we had 20 million people view it. We raised over 600,000 pounds that had gone out to some fantastic causes. Um, and yeah, it was, it was the biggest stay home platform across the whole of the UK. So I think in the very first meeting, I was asked how much are we targeting to raise? And I thought, well, 50,000 pounds would be amazing. So to do what we did, and I'm still kind of scratching my head. Um, and yeah, it's down to this, there's one person here, Lutz, and I think we're going to have a quick look, Lutz, aren't we? It's something that you, you did in Berlin, and let's have a natter about how you came up with the concept. On Friday, 13 March 2020, Berlin's entire nightlife sector was officially shut down to prevent the spread of COVID-19. All of a sudden, tens of thousands of employees and artists were out of work. This crisis poses the greatest threat to club culture in history. It gives me the feeling that a lot of like DJs and clubs now uh, waking up and think like, hey, hey, we need to work together again. As an immediate reaction to the closure of Berlin's nightlife and the lockdown measures enacted around the world, the city's clubs, event organizers and artists, and artists declare their support for each other. Together, they had the idea to create a joint streaming platform, which would raise funds to directly support clubs. United We Stream was initiated by the Berlin Club Commission, the Reclaimed Club Culture Network, and over a hundred volunteers. Clubs are for the people, they do this for people. The people want the music. Solidarity campaign committed to the preservation of club culture and raising awareness of the existential crisis within the nightlife sector. Now, Lutz, firstly, on behalf of everybody in Greater Manchester, if not the UK, thank you so much for allowing us to nick your concept. Um, but tell us, you know, how did it happen? You know, what, what was the trigger point for you? Well, first of all, I have to thank a lot of other people that were involved in this project. And I might be a, an initial person for this because it started actually here in my living room, uh, having phone calls and discussing what can we actually do to create awareness about the situation of empty stages, empty dance floors, 
but at the same time um, raise money because we were coming from a winter time. There were not a lot of income uh, in the club scene and festival scene, of course. Um, but also uh, diving into uh, a time that is, um, you know, the, ne the, the end of the month, paying paying rents, paying people, and we really have to we really had to f find a solution that um, because at this moment there was no discussion about government aid and help programs, so it was essential to um, help ourselves. And um, we actually decided on the day of the lockdown, on Friday the 13th, to kick off with this campaign. Um, we launched the platform already five days later, and that was possible because we had institutions such as uh, the Club Commission and the Initiative of Reclaim Club Culture would pull together all the people, all the knowledge from people who set up a website to create a logo, to uh, write texts um, and um, reach out to all the clubs. And after a few hours, I would say, um, we already had a plan and, and, and start, just started right away. And my role was much more to get people out of the shock of a lockdown into action and, um, and manage. Uh, you know, in the end, we were more than 100 people um, organizing themselves in WhatsApp groups and Slack channels and uh, things like that. Fantastic. And I don't think, you know, it, I don't think it came as any surprise to anybody that it was Berlin that actually put your head above the parapet first. You always, you're there first, aren't you? And I was in Berlin only a, a couple of years ago. And you're certainly now to party, that's for sure. Um, but no, in incredible to you and, and the whole team. And, and what people don't know as well is you've also created this app that we're in of, of nighttime ambassadors across the whole of the world. And it's so interesting to see how different countries are reacting to the incidents. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, Lutz. This is, uh, you know, we're here because of you. Yeah, well, because of us, I would say. We are a really global community now. Um, we started in a WhatsApp group with more than 100 people that are doing nighttime advocacy. You're one of them uh, doing a really amazing job in Manchester. And to pick up these kind of ideas and also adapting it and doing it fast, because that also showed that uh, that was the time of being fast, being not too skeptical about things, just go forward. And uh, to also have this, the, the trust in, from the people, from the clubs, from the people in the industry to support this, this idea, I think was also very essential. So both to have in, infrastructure, uh, institution like the club commission or the, the night mayor, um, but also to, to really start and do things and not, you know, to be, make it too complicated in the beginning. I think those are the two essences that the, the recipe basically to success. And am I right in thinking now, since United Regime started, the government in Germany have stepped forward and they are giving more help out to, to nighttime economy, especially nightclubs? Act yeah, so first of all, we, I think we pretty much raised the same amount as you did. So um, uh, really big accomplishment on your side. I mean, we, we were a bit earlier than Manchester, but, uh, but you definitely um, catched up. Um, but yeah, the help programs uh, or the United We Stream really helped to get to raise awareness. We were in all the news. We had all the um, national um, channels and media outlets that uh, reported about the situation of clubs. And that really led to discussions at roundtables with politicians very early, very fast, much faster than with other industries. And uh, until, to, until today, we we uh, could ensure that uh, none of the Berlin clubs had to shut down. And uh, United We Stream grow into, I think, 120 cities globally. And we raised almost 2 million euros um, in, in all over the world. So I think it's a, it's a very great success, but it's also a great success of showing a united scene. Um, people who are very individual, very much in their own bubbles, now stepping out, um, collaborating, um, and 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 presenting them together in a virtual on a virtual stage. Yeah, and I think you know one thing we do know is coming out of this pandemic, our whole scene comes together. We look after each other, and there's no one better to report back on that. You know, back in the 88, 89, the explosion. Last century. Last century. Last century. 
Um, so you know, it's when you talk about the hacienda, that exploded out of the back of a, a very, very great period. I didn't know we'd raised a similar amount of money as yourselves. So after this, I'm going to donate another £10 to make sure we won. Um, but <laughs> no, thank you. I, when, no, I, I made that donation. I made that donation. Okay, okay, fine. Well, you know, the beer gardens are opening, hospitality is slowly reopening now. So when you can, you're welcome in Manchester and I'll, I'll buy you a pint. So thank you lots. Same here, same here. Hope you're a bit faster in the UK at the moment. So um, we're catching up with, uh, with vaccination, but it definitely takes a bit longer than in the UK. I had, my, I had my text this morning to say, can I have my vaccination? Which I, to begin with, I was delighted about, but then I realized it just meant I was old. So it was like, I was happy for <laughs> one minute and realized, um, but no, thank you. So I think just speaking to the panel about what United We Stream uh, meant to yourselves, you know, from all, all different angles, from the combined authority, Marie Claire, what did you think about it? Um, it was interesting. I think it's really, really weird when you get a call from Sasha and he says, I've got an idea and you kind of, you, your stomach drops because you know there's a load of work coming your way <laughs> and you're like, oh God, he's got another idea. Um, and the combined authority, to give them their due, they backed us all the way and I think there's, there's something that that this couldn't have happened in another time. And I think there's, if you look at, at how everybody came together and there was like a, a much lower, like aversion to risk from the combined authority. So I think normally everybody, like you have to write papers and everybody has to be like really on board, but because we didn't know what to do. Like nobody could say, oh, 10 years ago, we did this in the last pandemic. Everybody was kind of scratching around and, and that gave us a freedom to kind of go, okay, well, actually, Berlin's got a solution. Let's do this. And I think amazingly, just how the community came together so quickly, the, the idea of setting up something like this in normal times, like, and I'm all about kind of risk management and business planning and all of the really dull stuff. And there's no way that you do say in a month we'll set up this thing less than a month and i know that the met and and tom um were really really keen on us having like a dead good risk assessment so there was risk assessment we were properly on it but but there was a kind of freedom and a coming together and i think that it came from the scrappiness of kind of club culture because you just do stuff like you don't worry you just crack on and do it and there was very much that sense in the early days that whenever there was like a barrier you just sort it out and I think that that is very contrary to what a, a local authority way of working normally is and I think there's it proposed challenges but f fair play to the CA for for allowing us to do it and supporting us to do it because not every local authority or combined authority across the country would do it. And I think having that backing allowed us to be quite bold and brave and do something phenomenal. And, and we had lo loads of partnerships as well. So obviously we'd work with the Badgers on previous kind of digital city stuff. And, and it was a really beautiful partnership of kind of private sector, club sector, like local authorities and and all of the kind of artists of communities and venues. And yeah, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. And you could never have planned it because you never have got it started because it was too big an ask. But it was, yeah, testament to, the, to the, the brilliant people we've got in Greater Manchester, I think. But at the very outset, when we were sat at the first initial meeting, we were very keen that we had already confirmed some absolute explosive events like that, the Hacienda event. Uh, that I think kick-started it actually week two. That's when it kind of went viral. I think it was 1.6 million people. But we were very keen to support more grassroots venues. We wanted it to, to uh, appeal to absolutely every. Talking about a lot of the artists who um, would, would play at smaller venues like the, the White Hotel in Solver, places like that there, you know, their work had just stopped them a platform and I think you know Rebecca um, what were your views on that obviously you're a, a local DJ in Manchester I think it was a great initiative and the way you responded to, to things and what you wanted to do and incorporate local artists and DJs 
and obviously give them that platform and to be able to raise funds. And I was obviously able to be part of that on DJ on various um, streams with United We Stream, which was, again, amazing. And what it really showed to me was the power of music, creative arts, the nightlife and the power of the people really coming together and the community. Um, it just kind of reaffirmed that we can all, when we can all come together, we really can. Well, thank you. And, you know, I said at the very beginning, the home of United We Stream was the Met. Um, without, you know, without the Met being a home, it just wouldn't have happened. It was that simple. So firstly, again, you know, I've said it so many times, thank you. Uh, you I know you jumped through hoops to get us there. Well, I mean, if, if you think back, it came out of a period of, of real confusion for, for everyone. Um, and I think, you know, what worked for us was the, the positive idea and the leadership around United We Stream. The suggested programme was, was very different to what we'd done from the Met previously. Um, but it was nice to kind of be judged on, not on the capacity of the venue, but on, you know, the team at the Met and, and how the venue could respond and, and um, with agility, I think, kind of work alongside the project. And, you know, phenomenal for us in terms of, of the global audiences, looking at, at stuff happening in, a, in our room, um, in terms of our core audiences, real pride around Bury at, at the Met being involved in such a brilliant project. And in terms of the organisation, sort of the partnerships, the, you know, the work that we continue to do with Manchester Jazz Festival, with Manchester Pride, with all of the partners involved, um, is kind of testament to the, that kind of positive drive that, that got through that period as well. Right, and, and uh, you know, I have to say, big shout out to Chris as well. Uh, you know, supported us throughout, it was, it was brilliant. I feel like I know the Met back to front actually, inside out. The one show that really did kick start off United We Stream was, was week two, the Hacienda event. Um, I don't know, I, I think it was because it was on the back end of the worst, we knew, we knew the virus was here, we knew it was in the UK. It was doom and gloom, doom and gloom, and it was a bank holiday, the weather was phenomenal. It was amazing. Amazing, and I think everybody just thought to themselves, do you know what, I've had enough, I'm gonna sit in the garden, I'm gonna have a few beers, I'm gonna watch the laptop, my phone blew up. I was getting messages from all over the place. And I think we were responsible for a lot of poorly heads the, the, the following day. It, I have to say, including our mayor, um, because he phoned up with a stinking hangover the next day. But what, why, why was it? What do you think happened that day, Graham? And also, for me personally, I, and I think you know this, I've said this on record, the 12 hour set that you did um, was my favourite one. And I think what people don't know is you were prepared to go and do a 24-hour one. We were discussing that. Uh, yes, but my, my wife got COVID once. You did? We had a pencilled in date. Yeah, I'm not sure I believe that, to be honest. I think it's when I said 24 hours, yeah. you went, oh, we've all I, got COVID. I will give you 24 hours on stream, GM. Okay, I'm fine. On record now. We'll hold you to that. <laughs> no, the, the weather was amazing, which, which was part of it. I can't believe it's a year ago uh, last weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're four yeah. degrees today. Yeah, but it was like twenty, early twenty degrees. Yeah. But it's, it's just the the way that people could connect online. Because you're right, um, we realise that this is serious. This lockdown, clubs are not going to open anytime soon, and the uh, the whole concept, you know, picking up what Lars said and and Marie Claire said, in normal times it would probably not have happened because everyone would be so busy. Oh, I've got gigs for the next six months, or oh, talk to my agent, or all that stuff. Suddenly, you've got thousands and thousands of musicians, DJs, performers, creatives, um, not, not just the people on the stage, but the people backstage as well, with time on their hands. And, you know, the thing about being a creative is you want to do something, and then you put the heads together, and then these ideas come around. And it was a John odd DJing without an audience, but David Berry met fantastic venue and I, go, I want to go on record again as soon as you're open properly I want to come and do something there I want to do it to an audience I love the fact you have that bank seating and, and, the, and the floor I'd be the promoter you, well is that less, okay less, <laughs> sounded like an in-house promotion <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 personally um to actually get in the car and drive on, on an empty m62 and m60 and DJ on a kicking sound system because that's that's the thing I loved the most. I did four gigs there: the two Hacienda House parties, the New Year's Eve party, and my 12-hour stream. And even though my audience were made up of the crew, the same crew we've got here, who were fantastic, it's not the same as, D, as, as, as DJ into a crowd. But to, but you didn't. 
try and cut corners. You put a kicking sound system in. And to have massive monitors and booming sound was amazing. But I think people were able to connect. Now, if this pandemic had happened 10 years ago, I don't think the technology would have um, made it such a success because every, most people have got great broadband uh, and, and so many devices and there were so many platforms and ways of watching. But on the way before I DJ and afterwards, just looking at the social media streams and the comments, um, although we're all spread out all over Greater Manchester, but as you said, 1.6 million people spread out around the world, we were all connected for that whole day. And, and like you say, we were, we're very proud at the Hacienda of, of, of um, helping be part of an amazing project. And the fact that you're still gonna continue a stream gem, hats off to you, really, really great work, Sasha. Oh, thank you. Well, it's, it's not, as Lutz said, it's the, it's the team, it's everybody. Um, so Tom, Folk Festival, what's, what's it been like during lockdown working with artists and, and well, I think we recognise, like everyone did pretty early on, that almost all the income streams from folk roots and acoustic sector were gone. We we're so reliant on, on live. But um, creatives are really entrepreneurial. So we found that a lot of people have moved very quickly to put in on their own shows from their own houses on Facebook. But we noticed there was a kind of tech gap, a bit of a knowledge gap between those, uh, those musicians who had done live streaming before, who maybe had some of the equipment, and those who didn't. So at English Folk Expo, we, we kind of jumped on that straight away quite early on, and we produced a series of learning videos and training videos called Producing Music Video Content at Home. And that sort of started the ball rolling for as many artists as possible to begin to, to stream via tip jars and, uh, and, and through Facebook. Um, and then beyond that, we started working with the wider sector to try and make sure that all the, these new amazing ideas that were coming out were actually being able to be considered and taken on board by lots of other people. And then there was a kind of drive for, for quality whilst being locked down. So how you end up making sure that the music that you produce is the highest quality you can, so that it enables people to, um, uh, to feel like they want to contribute and be able to continue to some element of their careers. And the other thing that I think Graham just touched on is, is the fact that when you move things online, you're no longer constrained by geography. So it meant that collaborative opportunities could happen internationally so much easier in a way that would never have been possible. And we've seen some fantastic new initiatives which we've been involved in coming out of that. Things like um, Global Music Match, which is definitely worth having a, having a look at, or, or even within the festival, being able to work with the official charts company to launch the first folk albums charts to try and make sure that as many of our audiences as possible were engaging with music. And that was only really possible because of this move on to live stream, this move on to making sure that everyone was was able to contribute, collaborate, and work together, and that and that that, that geographical audience was no longer a challenge to uh, to access. Can, no. I, can I just pick up on that? The, yeah. the, the collaborative bit and, and and the people being able to take part remotely. I mean, I, I was lucky that I was able to go to the Berry Met, but some DJs were doing it from their from America, from Italy, in their garden or um, in their kitchen. Um, but the, 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 our, our two Hacienda classical performances. But you couldn't have done that 10 years ago. You had the musicians at home. Because we ideal world, you get us all in the Berry Met. It's not going to happen because of social distancing. But the musicians at home, the singers in America, the singers at home, me, Yvonne, and Chris, the percussionist, and it all came together. Just unbelievable. I think the orchestra thing, for, that was an eye-watering moment. Uh, I think you know. I think people are quite timid when you saw it. It's a very tense, nervous moment because until we did it, we didn't <laughs> know it was going to work. You know, yeah. having to do my what I do with Hacienda Classical, I, I, you know, apart from playing uh, vinyl and 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 keyboards and sample and firing samples in, I had to do that with everyone elsewhere, and so we didn't know it was going to work till we did it. But it worked. Well, I knew we knew it would work, but you still have that kind of. How you tell me? Yeah, I know. I don't know. But that's that's the beauty of it. Um, t t taking the technology and, and going with it, whether whether it's electronic music or folk music, I'm, I guess you're probably not as excited about kicking sound system as we were. But um, I just think that the, the way everyone came together and made it work, and and, and the crew as well, the ba Badger and Coombs making it making it. And for 12 hours when I DJed, unbelievable, unbelievable. No, incredible. Um, it says on here, talk about my experience as a promoter during, during lockdown and events coming up. I mean, what do I say? The last 14 months, part life cancelled, warehouse project cancelled, 
you know, many, well, everyone was in the same boat. Uh, I'm just so lucky that I've got a, a great team around me, but it's allowed me to throw myself into to other things, working to try and get nighttime economy up and running again. I think the, the good news moving forward, and I want to talk about the future of streaming, something that you, you picked on some, because there's definitely a future for us. But the good news is this, Part Life went on sale three weeks ago, and it sold out in 78 minutes. 80,000 tickets in 78 minutes. Creamfields, I think you're doing Creamfields, aren't you? No, not, not this year, no. You're not, um, Creamfields sold out in two days. Leeds I'm Kendall Re Calling, and I'm doing Highest Point, but they, they all sold out very, very quickly. We, the, the bounce back is phenomenal. The people, you know, streaming is fantastic, but, and this is not a dig for streaming, it will never replicate being in a gig, shoulder to shoulder, holding a pint, where you've got the band stood in front of you or the DJ stood in front of you. It won't do that, but it will serve a purpose, I think, working alongside in parallel. And that's something I wanted to talk about because all of a sudden I've realized, you know, when you look at a gig, say Red Hot Chili Peppers at the Evening News Arena, for a lot of people that is not affordable. But maybe now there's something where streaming can kick in, where you, you, can, you know, it's not 80, 90 pounds is not an affordable ticket for most people, but maybe now you can stream this gig live for 15, 20 pounds. Then it's not also accessible to everybody for different reasons, anxiety and things like that. So, you know, I think there is most definitely a future here for streaming. I, I totally agree. Um, I've already had uh, been looking at like, some of my early gigs from 25th of June onwards are very small and you're talking about a massive gig that's very expensive, but I also think a small gig that only has 250, 300 people, there's an opportunity there for people on the other side of the country or other side of the world, you know, while having breakfast in Sydney, for example, to have a, an audio stream. Not necessarily, I don't think it necessarily needs to be a video stream either, because that, that involves setting up lots of cameras, but an, an audio stream, I think, um, would be a way, way of doing it. But I'm sure Rebecca will back me up on this. I can't wait to see the whites of people's eyes and <laughs> smell the crowd. <laughs> you know, because um, the stream is great sure. with, without an audience, but you, you just think, right, what am I going to do? And you do it. But on the way to a gig, your ideas and your head might change when you get to the club because the audience might not be, might be on a different vibe to you or the DJ before you might be on a different tip to, to the way you were going to play. So I'm sure Rebecca will back me up. Can't Absolutely. wait to see the audience. I think this whole 12 months of doing live streams and not feeding off energy in the space where you would normally in a club or a venue or a bar um, has been so interesting. So it, I'm really excited to get back out there and just be in a space, but where you can actually feed off those vibes and see people. But streaming, on the other hand, has opened up a whole new energy of DJing for me. Um, I'm sure Graham will agree. So it's it's opened up like different narratives and I'm excited to see where this goes. And I'm all about, like you said, with the audio, if someone wanted to tune into a gig on the other side of the world, how amazing would that be um, to open up a wider audience or different audiences? And are you starting to see bookings coming in now, Rebecca? Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's gone crazy, to be honest. So, yeah, I'm excited to, for this summer alone um, and later in the year. And just with people really getting excited about planning events, I'm, I'm planning some of my own as well as a promoter. Um, so, yeah, it's it's an exciting time and it's really nice to see people just ready for it and, and wanting to be out there. So, yes, for sure. And lots back over in Berlin. Um, what, what is the, what's the global ambition now for United We Stream now as we start to, to unlock? Well, I, th I think what we created now is, um, is something that we should keep in terms of exchanging knowledge about streaming services to also understand better what a community needs also after opening up. Um, it's about advocating um, we have so many good examples uh, through the United We Stream family, I would call it, um, where they could um, get funded from the government. We have good examples from Tbilisi. We have it in Madrid. Um, in, we have co collaborations in Asia and in, in Latin America opening up, which haven't been there before, because suddenly a scene was uh, working together towards one goal and reaching out audiences and um yeah, and that is something that I think we should um, 
you know, preserve and, and work on it together. And uh, that's why we uh, start an international organization together with, um, uh, with, with you, with the Manchester team and everybody else in the, in the global team that uh, wants to join and um, have regular exchange and, uh, and projects that we're also working on, uh, you as well, the Global Nighttime Recovery Plan. Um, will also feed into this and give information about what's going on over the world, um, learn from each other, um, get practices, because we don't even know if they're best practices. We learn just in the making uh, from each other and um, get inspired. And uh, yeah, I think what we're doing now is pioneering and we also don't know where it le leads, but we also understand that streaming will be a part of the music scene in the future. Um, it will not replace the partying part, uh, the togetherness in, a, in one room, but uh, it will definitely give access to people, uh, as you also mentioned before, who maybe didn't get access or couldn't have access. You know, you say, you say pioneer, but you and your team, you've not just pioneered, but you've actually inspired a lot of people globally. Um, so in incredible. But, you know, Thanks, man. Uni United We Stream is done, it's boxed. Now, the next chapter, Stream GM, teasers. Come on, what's coming up? Tell us. So I think, I think um, like, on what Lutz said, so we are working with the United Restream Berlin team, and there is something there that we don't want to lose. Like, it's phenomenal, not just in terms of that kind of sharing of practice, but also in terms of sharing of audiences. So yesterday, we had DJ Woody do this amazing set. Like, if you didn't catch it, then do. But that was at 11 o'clock on a Monday, and it's had 20,000 views in less than 24 hours. Like, that is phenomenal, phenomenal in terms of audience reach and we know that that audience is from around the world tuning in from around the world so we've got this this weird thing where where we won't be continuing kind of united we stream gm in the same way because the fundraising element has kind of gone but we've got this global network and family of audiences and friends and people who we want to keep in touch with but we've also got this platform that we've built in greater manchester where we can show talent like an across all kind of art forms and genres and across different organizations and and different times and different points in the year and what we didn't want to do was to lose that kind of the the platform that we've built which you know it, in years to come um international travel cultural tourism like look at the impact of brexit like things are going to be really, really challenging for artists on an international scale. So how do we make sure that there's still a way for artists in Greater Manchester and for that kind of talent pipeline and platform? So we are showing, and, and just because somebody can't fly over to see something in Manchester doesn't mean that they don't know how brilliant the stuff that we've got is. And we want to keep that going. So kind of Stream GM is the continuation. And, and, and so Stream GM is the kind of Greater Manchester bit where we, we work with organizations like the Folk Festival, like, you know, different promoters. And, and we, we showcase the best of what we've got. And I think we've got a little taster of that, not this week, but next week on our kind of Stream GM digital, digital city showcase. But how we do that, but how we continue with that global thing, which is phenomenal. Like, I've got a mate who, who was dead excited about going to a gig in Mexico the other day. Like, of course they weren't going to Mexico, but they, they, would, like, they would never have been able to go to that gig. And that's something that we need to keep, I think. And it is just about, it's been awful for everybody over the last year. But there's been some really good stuff. And how do we keep the good stuff while we get over the bad stuff? Just before we started, Graham told me a story about drinking tequila in Mexico and getting arrested for climbing up a lamppost. <laughs> that was in 1990, yeah. Yeah, it was nice. It wasn't recent. <laughs> um, so it's a platform then. And again, you know, obviously it's great to have the big names on, but we've got so much undiscovered talent in Greater Manchester, haven't we? Um, and I think this is the perfect opportunity to give them that stage. Absolutely. I think one of my things is, like, the internet, I sound like a 40 year old, I am a 40 year old. The internet has been a great kind of democratizer in terms of anybody can put their stuff out. But how do you cut through the noise? And hopefully this will be a, one of the ways in which you start to, to be able to, you know, people trust us as curators of stuff. 
and they'll they'll go on a journey and maybe try something that they wouldn't have tried before and it's about that that how do you create a a platform that that raises all of the talent in Greater Manchester, whether that is jazz artists, whether that is kind of dancers, whether that is an orchestra, that raises it above what can be quite a confusing noise of everybody doing everything. I've got someone frantically waving arms to say we're about to finish. So I think just off every single panellist, personally, thank you for turning up. Thank you for coming, especially Thanks. Lutz. 20 seconds each of you sum up United We Stream, Graham. Um, incredible, amazing, inclusive, and fun in the extreme. Uh, inspiring, lots of unexpected outcomes that have led all organizations across Greater Manchester to start exploring digital properly this year and thinking about what it means going forward. I think um, bringing the whole of Greater Manchester together, I felt it really felt like everyone, even though we couldn't meet in person, we were all connected when we were watching those shows. And, uh, and I think that was a really important aspect of what Greater Manchester is about. Exhausting, like really tired, <laughs> <laughs> really, really tired. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. I think people don't realise we were doing it completely. Yeah, you know. I, I, I did like working eight hour weeks on it from bed. Like I didn't leave my house. This is the first time I've been out my house for working more than a year. Like... But uh, brilliant, wonderful, but very tiring. Rebecca. Just inspirational and really the power of the community, as I said before, just the creative arts and the power of music and how people come together. I thought just watching it and being part of it, amazing. And finally, Lutz. I would say global club culture, family, dancing together, united, at home. Well, look, again, thank you for coming. Um, Thanks for having us. Hopefully I've said what you wanted me to say. If I'm not, I apologise. Very well done. On script, it sure. won't. It won't be the first <laughs> time. I think I've, I've done it to time as well. But no, thank you. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.